Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about transgender athletes in sports and why they have like an unfair advantage. And so the first thing I want to talk about is like some safety concerns that come along with it. And one of them is is like mentally it can be like hard for like people who are competing against like men, let's say, that are trained into a woman because they're expected to win if they're like really good. So then they play you with like a man, and then they don't do good. And another like safety concern is with like wrestling and fighting mainly because men are a lot stronger and so then can punch harder, or, like wrestle better, so then it's like not okay. Um, so unfair advantages, um, men have much higher testosterone than women. Um, as you can see here, um, the woman's highest testosterone is only 75, whereas the men is already at 75 when they're born and hit around like 1,000 at the highest point in their life. Um, one person said, for the first two years of starting hormone therapy, a trans woman is able to do 10 more push-ups and 16 more sit-ups than a regular woman. And over here, they did a study and they have 100 female and male uh, people and then 100 transgender men and women. And they could see how many push-ups and stuff they could do. And then we can see how when they start the hormone therapy, like the women in the push-ups, it starts to go down, but even after two years, they're able to do more push-ups. And we can see with the men in the sit-ups that they actually out, they like start going up and are past the men and can do almost 10 more push-ups uh, or sit-ups after that time. And then it says boys' testosterone levels are around 25 times those of a girl who went through puberty, giving them an athletic advantage of those who have not gone through male puberty. Um, so one thing that has been said is maybe like allowing men to compete if they're changing to women before they hit this like 17 to 14 years because they're still pretty low. Um, so some rules, it happens at all three levels, the elite level, state rules, and around us. So at the elite level, track and field, swimming, rugby, and UFC have all banned transgender people. And in track and field, um, we can look on this next slide real quick. Um, here is some data from the 2016 Rio Olympics. And the marathon, the uh, men's gold medal beat the women's by like 16 minutes. And the girl would have placed 90th out of 155 and said it's like the first moment. And then in swimming right here, uh, the men or the girl were placed 26 out of 27 in the men and lost like 20 seconds. And then the 10,000 meter run is a big difference. It's almost like 12 minutes, I think it was, and she would have got on the glass again. Um, so when we go back here, swimming, a main person who was brought up there is Leah Thomas, who won the 500 freestyle championship for D1, and it's the fastest time by two seconds that year. Um, world rugby, um, that's like super dangerous sport to have transgender people because there's a lot of like head-on-head -head collisions and stuff. And it says, they said that transgender women could not play at a safety and fairness concerns of those of non-transgender women. And then UFC actually had an incident happen where a transgender woman actually broke the skull of a regular woman. And the competitor said, I fought a lot of women and never felt strength like that. I've never felt so overpowered in my life, and I'm abnormally strong. And she, the girl she lost to and got her skull broken from was on hormone therapy for like two years, so it was quite a while and she still beat her. Um, 11 states so far have passed rules regarding transgender women and not allowing them to play. Um, all of them are K through 12 that cannot play. And then the first one happened in 2020, showing that this is like a very recent issue. And then around us, 50, 54% of Iowans wanted this bill to be passed to ban them. 9% um, said that they didn't care, so um, like almost two thirds like said yes, so they did not care. Um, mainly parents with kids under 18 because they're concerned for their kids and for the fairness and safety concerns. And then Ainsley, uh, she is a competitor here in Iowa who ran track. And she said, at the time that made me the fastest Iowa high school female athlete in the 800 meter run of all time, gave me a national championship, was easily beat by 85 high school men at the 2021 high school track meet state alone. Um, even with T blocks, that so testosterone blocks, she would have been beat by 65 of them. So it shows that like, even around this, this is a main issue. Um, so we just talked about, um, so here's two trans athletes. So the first one, uh, her new name is Cece. Um, she competed as a man for three years.
years, so as a freshman, sophomore, and junior year, she was in band, and that was in the D3 level, and she lost, or she was like 75 percentile, so like pretty bad, and then when she became a girl, she won the D2 400 hurdles by two seconds, and her time actually got better when she went from a man to a woman somehow, so I'm not sure about that, and when she was in the men, she placed 200s out of 390, um, the next one is Veronica Ivy. She is a cyclist um, and she competed at the UCI Master World Tri Championship for age 35 to 44 and won by 15 minutes. And the day before that, she won in the 200 sprint. And so she's an all around great athlete, but her time again got better from when she went to male to female. And then one of the competitors against Veronica said, why do I have to compete against a male body? It's right, outright completely unfair to me and my teammates. Um, so some solutions to this issue is create like a third slash fourth division. So they could, if they did four divisions, they could do a transgender men and transgender women, or they could do three divisions, just like transgender in general. Lower the testosterone levels allowed. So right now they only have to be on T block for about a year. And if they lower it to two years, then it's a lot more as you can see, even before that drops it by 31%, which is a lot. And then the last one is talk to your government official. This is what you can do um, right here. This was in 2022 when Iowa passed a rule that did not allow transgender people. So if you think that you should change it, then talk to your government officials. And then thank you. And it's been my second.